Mark Danulo is the author of The Innovative Sale. He is a true sales expert, and here are his five steps to thrive in sales. You've got to have a method to go in and work with that account. So last time we talked about account planning, which is all about the plan, the strategy. So that uh, said, we've got a framework to start with. We've got to then talk about how we're going to differentiate in front of that customer. I think the big trap that we're talking about here is when people go in and they do the same thing over and over. So I think about uh, a new opportunity. First thing I think about is what's the last time I proposed on something like that? Do I have a proposal I can pull out and I can use for that? Or is there something I can leverage? Well, that's only part of the answer. What you want to do is you want to start to think about what I should be doing differently. So we always ask the question, why do people tend to create the same old solutions? They tend to do the same things and they leave themselves vulnerable to competition. And if you're going into an RFP situation or you're going into a situation that is competitive, chances are you're gonna be doing pretty much the same thing as everybody else. And then we start to fall down to those other differentiators that we don't want, which is price or terms or things like that. So we talk about how do you start from a differentiated starting point, but how do you start to redefine your problem and look at it differently from the very beginning? I think a large percentage of customers think they know what the problem is. And a good percentage of those customers will not tell you the entire problem. They'll tell you what they want you to solve or what with the, you know, the box they want to keep you in. And, and I think when we start to look beyond that, that's when we uncover things that they maybe are not telling us. They're not going to tell us things perhaps organizationally. So that example I use, they're not going to say, well, you know, we had layoffs in our marketing department, so we don't have the capabilities we used to have. What they're trying to do is they're trying to solve point solutions. So I don't know that they, um, you know, overtly try to not tell us everything or, or try not to give us the entire problem. I think they try to put us in a box and, 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 and try to focus on us, us in a certain direction. By, by asking those questions, then we start to get them thinking more. We start to build some trust with them. But there's a lot to be said for when you start to ask those questions, they start to see you differently as well. It's like, oh, you're not just a provider of X. You're actually trying to solve something for me. You know, in the course of that, you may actually bring other solutions to the table that may be beyond you, right? So by doing that, you start to build your status as a trusted advisor by, by thinking broadly uh, through those questions. I, I usually use that anchoring technique probably one time in a given transaction. And the reason is, if you think about the, the big steps, well, what we're trying to do is first define and redefine the problem. So we've got that to work with. Then we go into this anchoring or think about it as divergent thinking or horizontal thinking. So we're coming up with a range of ideas, right? That right there is gonna stretch the customer a bit because they're gonna go, wait a second. Okay, we, had, we hadn't thought about all these things. When we do the horizontal thinking, what we want to do is we want to start to narrow in and say, okay, well, these are the couple of ideas that we think are worth pursuing. Then we start to go into uh, vertical development, which is, okay, these were the couple of ideas that we thought made sense. Let's build those out for you. Let us give you a proposal on those couple of options and see what you think. And then we start, you know, start to tighten up and we start to refine. We don't want to stay divergent for a long period of time. It's confusing. It could be, you know, uh, uh, distracting to the customer. We want to do that one time and we want to tell them what we're doing. You know, we go through a bit of a creative process here. So I hope you'll bear with us because we might come up with something that's a new idea for you. You may find some customers that aren't interested in that and that's okay. But a lot of them will say, well, yeah, we would appreciate that. But then quickly after that, you want to start to narrow in because we do also have, uh, depending on your sales process or sales cycle, we have speed we have to think about. So we want to move pretty rapidly and close out. We don't want to be continuing divergent thinking while everybody else is trying to close out on the sale. So there's a timeliness factor that. So they don't have the budget to purchase the product from you or they may not have the budget to uh, implement. Uh, and, and we run into this quite a bit, which is um, financially how we're going to make this work. Uh, if you can show some type of, uh, and this will sound a little cliched, if you can show some type of ROI from what you're doing, that can help. Okay. So that doesn't tell you enough, though. What you <clears throat> have to do is you have to try to find that in terms of very high probability returns. Uh, so the highest probability returns you can find within a business are cost cutting. So if we can cut certain costs in certain areas, the example you gave before about reducing breakage, well, we can't afford that solution well, but if you could reduce the breakage rate by a certain percentage, you may be able to, right? The less, the ones that are harder cases to make are the ones that are more aspirational. Well, if we put this in place, we're going to increase the productivity of your team by 15%. Well, you know, I've heard 
customers tell me, well, if uh, you know we had all those 15% productivities, our, our people would be able to stay at home because they're so productive, right? So you've got to look for those hard dollar returns. Those are usually the best ways to go. Uh, I'm thinking about one company that was a, uh, they're, they're a carpet manufacturer and they were in a competitive bid for a, a major real estate company in New York. They were more expensive than their competitors. And that question came up, well, you're more, you're more costly per square yard than, than our competitors. How can we possibly justify it? And they went and they said, well, let's take a look at what happens when you build a building and what happens in terms of the lead time you need and being able to get the carpet in and being able to lease that, that particular space out quickly. And if you have, and they, they were able to break it down to, to uh, on-time delivery and, and error rates. And if you have, uh, if you can cut your, your delivery times, if you can cut your error rates, the difference in terms of our cost per square foot or per square yard goes down and it's, it's practically eliminated. So they could prove that out. So you've got to be able to start to break these things into pieces in terms of where they can see the tangible returns. But the one I get the best acceptance on is where, where we can cut costs for them. I think if you look at your buyer, you look at the group that you're selling to, you could ask what their needs are in certain areas. It could be a strategic need. So we want to do something big with the company, big with the organization. It might be uh, heading in a new direction. It might be differentiating themselves in the market. Uh, you could have a benefit that's around people, like you said, the organization itself. How do I increase employee engagement, employee satisfaction? That tends to be a little bit more on the human side. On more of the left-brained, you might have a benefit around financial, of course. So you're going to see a certain dollar return or, uh, or, or pound or euro return on this. Uh, and then you could also have a process benefit, which is this is going to make your operation run better. This is going to make things run more smoothly in terms of how you do your work. So if you break those four areas, it, it's roughly what you talked about. But I think you've got kind of the left brain benefits, which are the financial and process. You've got the right brain benefits, which are more of the strategic and more of the people oriented benefits. So I think nailing that down, understanding that early on will help you to be you know, heading in the right direction.